Assalamu alaikum. Today we're going to talk about the skeletal system. So in this chapter we're talking about support in human beings after we're talking about plants. So uh, of course we're going to talk about the skeletal system because this is a system of support in the human body. And uh, the skeletal system has an axis on which all the other parts are attached. So this axis is the vertebral column and here we'll have the skull around here we'll have the rib cage in which the lungs and the heart were found and here we'll have the pectoral girdle which is the uh, consists of the two scapulas and then we'll have the upper limbs and here we'll have the pelvic girdle which is the pelvis, the bone of the pelvis, and then we'll have the lower limbs. And I wish the skeleton was actually as easy as that. It looks uh, really weird. But uh, this is just an illustration. So um, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the vertebral column. So if we uh, look at the vertebral column from the side, we will see that it looks like that. So it's not straight, it has kind of an S shape, and it has different regions. The first region, which is the region of the neck around here, uh, is called the cervical. So cervix is the neck. Cervical, the uh, region of the neck or the area of the neck and the vertebral column consists of vertebrae so the cervical region will have seven vertebrae then we go to the next region which is the thoracic region the area of the thorax or the chest and this one is the uh, longest so thoracic and it has 12 vertebrae and then we have the lumbar region which is the area of the lower back and this one has five vertebrae and then we have the sacral region which is uh, this region the part of the vertebral column in which the, the pelvis is attached and this one also has five vertebrae and then we have the coccygeal region the coccyx which has around three or four this sums up to around 33 vertebrae from the shape of the vertebral column we will notice that uh, the vertebrae in each region are different in uh, thickness and shape. So the cervical ones are small, the thoracic ones are larger than the cervical, they're medium sized, the lumbar ones are the largest, and then the sacral, they are large but they're fused together so uh, you cannot remove just one of them they are all attached to each other and then we have the coccygeal they're very very small and they're also fused with each other so this is the vertebral column now we'll have a view of the uh, vertebra a general uh, view of a thoracic vertebra so it will look something like this. First off, we have this disc here. So this is called the disc or the centrum, this part. And here we have a canal. The canal is formed by an opening here between this spine and the processes 
as we'll see in a moment. Now, this is the shape of the vertebra. We're looking at it from a posterior view. And uh, the spine actually should be uh, bigger. Like that. So this is a posterior view. Because if we look at the vertebral colon from a side view, we'll see that there are spines like that. These spines are this one. This spine. This spine is called the neural spine. So this is called a neural spine. And the canal here is called the neural canal. Why is it called a neural canal? Because there is a neural structure that passes through the canal, which is the spinal cord. So the spinal cord, the spine, passes through this canal. And then we have this uh, process. We have this process, which is called transverse process. A process is something that protrudes to the outside. So this is called transverse because it protrudes to the side. So transverse process. And then we have these two. This one is called the anterior articulating process. And this one is the posterior also the posterior articulating process. So these two processes help in the act of sliding between uh, each two vertebrae. So they help in the articulation, the movement of the vertebrae. One of them is found anteriorly and the other one is found posteriorly. So this is the general shape of the vertebrae.